بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميدا مجيد In the name of Allah the Lord of everything I ask Allah the most high to send peace and blessings upon his beloved prophet Muhammad and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of resurrection. This lesson is a continuation of our previous lesson. Our previous lesson was regarding the rights of the Muslim man to his wife. In this lesson today, we'll elaborate upon the other rights between the two spouses and bring forth other Islamic evidence to support each person's right in the marriage contract. So let's start. Bismillah. It was narrated by Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, that the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said in his farewell sermon fear allah concerning women verily you have taken them in the security of allah the most high and intercourse with them has been made permissible to you by the words of allah the most high to you have rights over them and that they should not allow anyone to sit on your bed, that is, entering your house without your consent, or people whom you dislike. If they do that, you can chastise them, but not severely. Their rights upon you are that you should provide for them food and clothing in the manner that's best befitting. Narrated by Muslim. Okay, or just as the Prophet has said. In his narration. Now let's move on to the other right. The other right of the Muslim man upon his wife is to provide for her a accommodation. This is one of the wife's right, which means that the husband should prepare an accommodation for her according to his meal, mead, his need, and according to his abilities. And he should never oppress himself nor she should oppress him in doing this act to her now let's go to the interpretation of the verse of Allah regarding this matter lodge Allah said in his Quran lodge them the divorced woman where you dwell according to your means chapter talaq Verses 6. Now let's go on to the third right. Non-financial rights. It's up on the Muslim man to treat his wife and the other co-wives equally. One of the rights that a wife has over her husband is that she and her co-wives should be treated equally and respectfully. If the husband is in such a situation, kind treatment. This should all govern the way he treats his, all his wives. And also, there's a hadith of Prophet Muhammad, be, be peace and blessings of Allah be upon Prophet Muhammad, where he says, whoever treats one wife or whoever inclines to a wife more than the other, on the day of judgment, he will find his side bent. Or, as the Prophet said, meaning that, however, that 
However, what means you have, you should be just to both wives. You shouldn't incline. So if one wife, if you've agreed that you spend a night with this wife, another night should be spent justly and equally to the other wife. In order not to go again to Sunnah. In order not to be an oppressor. In order to be just. If you are a man with more than one wife, are you implementing this sunnah in your daily life? Are you being just to your wives? Are you? Ask yourself this before you are asked on the day of judgment. Now let's move on. This is regarding kind treatment. The husband must have a good attitude towards his wife or wives. And he should be soft to them. He should be soft, nice, caring, and respectful. And he should also, most importantly, he should have a soft heart to all of them. Yes, they're human beings just like you. You make sense. You make errors. Allah is most forgiven. And Allah is above all of us. Now, if our spouse or husband or wife makes an error, why can't you forgive them in order to be dutiful to your Lord and in order to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Now let's move on. And the verse that emphasizes the treatment and the good manners regarding your, your, your wife is Allah's verse in the Quran which states, and live with them honorably. Chapter Nisa, verses 19. And they woman have rights over the husband as regarding living expenses, similar to, similarly to those of their husbands. It's narrated from the Prophet وسلم, by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with Abu Hurairah, where he said that the Prophet said, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Be kind to women. And this is a clear and explicit statement of the Prophet. ﷺ. Be kind to women, narrated by Al Bukhari and Muslim. There follow examples of the kind treatment of the Prophet. ﷺ. Peace, peace be upon Prophet Muhammad towards his wife, for he is the best of all examples. One example is, it's narrated by Zainab bint Abi Salama, that Um Salama said, I got my menses when I was lying with Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessing be upon him, under a single wooden, woolen sheet. I slipped away and put on my clothes because of menstruation. The Messenger of Allah, may peace and blessing be upon him, called me and I said to him, I have seen my menses. The Prophet then said, or the Prophet asked, did you see your menses? She responded, yes, I did. The Prophet called her back to lie with him under the same sheet. Now look at this situation. Look at this example. Did the Prophet treat the woman in a abnormal way? Did he order her to get off the bed because she is seeing her monthly cycle? Did he do this? Or he told her to come back and lie with me? These are things we need to look at. We need to study the Sunnah. More than just studying it, we need to study, then we implement. Not just studying for knowing its sake. We need to know, then we need to implement. And few of these we have in this day. Many people, they so-called know. We know, if you ask a brother or sister, why are you doing this? Oh, you give them the proof. Oh, yes, I know. Where's the action, guys? Where are the actions? which should be in according to the Qur'an and Sunnah, if we truly believe in Allah and the Day of Resurrection. Now let's move on. She said, 
and she told me and she told me that the prophet peace be uh, and blessings of allah be upon him used to kiss her when she was fasting this is fasting the best of all creation kissing his wife while he was fasting this shows the mercy that prophet muhammad peace be upon him had in his heart for his wife and I used to do ghusl, cleansing, our, he used, um, and I used to do ghusl to cleanse ourselves from janabah, from one vessel. So the Prophet ﷺ did ghusl with one of his wife in one or next to one vessel of water. So he took this water from a vessel and they both had ghusl in the same area. Now let's move on to another narration. It was narrated by Urwa bin Zubir said, Aisha radiallahu anha, by Allah, I saw messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, standing at the door of my apartment when the Abyssians were playing with their spears in the masjid of the messenger of Allah. And May peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad. He covered me with his cloak so that I could watch their games. Then he stood there for my sake until I was the one who had had enough. So, you, you should appreciate the fact that young girls like to have fun. And even there's another situation, you know. The Prophet ﷺ sometimes had contests running or walking contests with Aisha radiallahu once Aisha would precede him and then he would precede her so you can see the love that the Prophet sallallahu showed to his wives he was nice to them he was the best of all the examples where are we today with our wives where are we today with the treatment of our wives do we hold our wives hands do we tell our wives that you're beautiful are we nice to them or we're just harsh harsh when they make an error or if something just goes wrong are we grateful that they are in our lives are we grateful first and most to Allah that Allah has blessed us with this woman this Muslim woman and secondly grateful of having a person to share our lives with. This is very important, guys. We have to look in ourselves on a daily basis where we see the blessings, the numerous blessings that Allah has given us, and we're just ghafla, we're just ghafil, we're just unaware of these, or we're, we, we choose not to recognize them, or we choose to be unaware of the importance of these so-called simple blessings but are in fact great from Allah to us and let's move on to another narration it was narrated from Aisha that the mother of the believers may Allah be pleased with her that the messenger of law of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him used to pray sitting down he would recite the Quran when he was sitting down then there were 30 or 40 ayats left. He would stand up and recite them standing up. Then he did ruku. Then he, then he did ruku. Then sujood. Then he would be likewise in the second rakat. When he had finished his prayer, he would look. And if I was awake, he would talk with me. And if I was asleep, he would lie down. So you see that? After praying, he would have a conversation with his wife. Not just, okay, my connection is with my Lord and that's it. Everyone has to be given their rights. Of course, Allah's rights are the most important and the most highest of all ranks. Then their rights of the wife, their rights of the children. So keep this in mind. Keep this in mind when we act and we conduct our daily lives. Now we're going to stop here for today and inshallah in our next setting we're going to continue. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.